guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Karen and thank you so much for joining me for today's video. I do realize this video is going up a little late. Usually I do upload every other day at 7 a.m. Central Time. It just feels like the easiest time for me and I'm totally one of those people that watches YouTube while I'm getting ready for work, I should say. And so that's why I kind of picked 7 a.m. But if you guys have any thoughts on if I should switch up my upload time, definitely let me know. Plus then you can watch it on your lunch break or on your commute to work. So yeah, I feel like 7 a.m. Central Time really works for me, but I'm so sorry that I missed my upload time this morning. I'm really feeling some YouTuber guilt this week. The wonderful, beautiful, amazing YouTuber Angelica Nyquist gave me a shout out in her 8 YouTubers under 8k to follow. That video has bought me so many new subscribers and honestly I feel like this shout out really speaks to her character. I'm just so impressed by her channel. I'm a subscriber of her channel. That's kind of how I guess you would say she found me and she kind of mentions it in the video too. I just like reach out to her and you know I reach out to a lot of YouTubers in my time and a lot of times I know they're so big I'm never gonna hear back but I was so excited when she got back to me and she actually also does top five Tuesdays with me on Instagram so that's really cool she's been a part of that group as well she's just very down-to-earth and humble and I mean technically she does have a small channel she says that about her channel too but I think she is on her way to greatness because she's just really really cool I love her makeup vibes I love her videos she does a little mix of everything so if you haven't checked out her channel yet I do have her linked in my description box there is a lot of crap in my description box but there's also some really cool stuff I do answer some personal questions in the description box as well as I do have a category of my favorite youtubers currently I only have two because you guys I'm constantly shuffling through youtubers that I like to watch and so you will find Angelica's channel link down there if you did come from her channel thank you guys so much you've been leaving such great comments again I think it really speaks to the positivity on her channel and just how great she is and she's followed by some really amazing subscribers and I'm so glad you guys came over to my channel so I'm gonna stop blabbering but I haven't filmed in a while this is really really strange it's like super early in the morning for me I'm a little bit tired we had people over last night and it's just been a crazy long week so I'm really excited to get back into my schedule so anyway let me tell you about today's video this is kind of different for me I want to call it like what's on my face because a lot of youtubers are super good at like linking what they used on their face and I am not and I usually try to just link my foundation my uh, makeup palette or eyeshadow palette that I use and there's one more thing I try to mention in my description box but I never get to it I hate filling out the description box because it literally takes so long. Anyway, I was thinking about it, I was like, God, I use a lot of products on a day-to-day -day basis and you guys don't really see it because I'm not a huge tutorial-based channel and I do like to do get ready with me's every once in a while, especially if it's a new product, just so you guys can see how it applies on my face. But get ready with me's get so, so long and I'm totally one of those people that can just binge watch somebody talking about products. So what I did today is while I was doing my makeup, I put everything I used on my face in this little basket and I thought it would be fun for me to just go through and show you guys what I used on my face today. So if you are interested in this type of video, definitely let me know in the comments because I don't really know that people have done this before. I feel like the only time you really see what's on somebody's face is if they're doing a tutorial or it's a get ready with me type video. So we'll see how this goes. If you guys are interested in these, I can definitely do them more often. I personally suffer from like YouTubers guilt where I'm like, I don't really talk about a lot of the products I use on the daily. I don't really talk about products I go back to. I'm kind of like, let me film a swatch video, let me film a review and let's move on. But I think you guys might enjoy seeing what I actually use on my face. So I'm going to stop blabbering and let's get into it. Okay, so let's talk about some of the face products I use. I did talk about this in my get ready with me that went up last this is the fresh rose deep hydration facial toner and as you guys can see these green stickers if you ever see me show a product with a green sticker it's because it's part of my like project pan or like project 
skincare pan or whatever you want to call it. So this is a skincare item I am trying to use up this year and of course I'm getting really close. This product is so expensive you guys. I think this was a $40 toner which I've never bought a $40 toner. Usually I just buy stuff from the Body Shop because Body Shop has very affordable toners and they do the job for me. This one is really nice. It is for hydration and it says it softens skin and refines the appearance of pores for a healthy looking complexion. Now Jeffrey Star did mention this uh, like last year or something which is why I bought it because he mentioned it sometime during the VIB sale and I was like cool let me try it out I don't see any extra benefits from this I am just like the worst when it comes to skincare because I'm like this didn't really do anything for me like I can't tell any difference which I feel like is an indication that if it didn't change anything for me maybe you know it's not really worth the hype so I would not repurchase this and now that I'm getting to the bottom it's kind of a pain in the ass because there's real rose petals in here. So it's hard to get the product out because if you see the top, it's just like a little hole in here. So the rose petals like stop like create a blockage in the nozzle and it's really hard for me to get the toner out so I don't know if they thought about that when they designed this packaging of course it's very sleek and very simple like everything else fresh does but uh, yeah not a huge fan of the packaging so definitely not going to be buying that again. Another skincare item that is part of my project pan is the Post Makeup Recovery Spray. So last night I had mentioned we had people over. I was so exhausted. All I did was take my makeup off and fall straight into bed. And so I still had a lot of residual makeup on my face this morning. And so I like to use this Post Makeup Recovery Spray at nighttime once I take all my makeup off. This was a um, like a freebie or like something I don't know I was curious to try this from Scandinavia so I bought it when I bought their setting spray because this product I wouldn't say is as hyped as it used to be but everyone used to talk about Scandinavia and honestly this post makeup recovery spray I don't really feel like it does anything again but I'm trying to use it up so I try to remember to spray it this says it gently clears pores and helps prevent breakouts used immediately after removing makeup so that's what it's for. I, I wouldn't say go out and buy it, but I have it. So again, I'm trying to use it up. Next item I did use today is this palette, which is why it's dirty. You don't really think you need this because it's like, oh, that's so stupid. Like, I can just put my makeup on my hand. But it's honestly so much less messy to have this guy. And this is also great for mixing. So I'm so glad I have this palette. Plus, it's pretty sanitary to not put foundation on your hands so makes me excited plus I don't waste any product from it sinking into my skin. Another item I used while I was getting ready today is the Juno Oil by Sunday Riley. You guys know this is my ride or die face oil. I am just like so anxious about this finishing. I want to make it to the VIB sale in April so I can pick this guy up because of course the Sunday Riley oils are not cheap by any means, but this is a really awesome oil. It says it gives obsession-worthy radiance, anti-aging benefits with antioxidant-rich superfood oils, and this is one I put on my face every morning when I'm getting ready because it truly hydrates my skin, and I live in a severely cold climate, so I need something super, super hydrating on my face. Now, this guy I've been trying. This is the Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer, Primer Plus Moisturizer. Uh, so this is a two-in-one product. It has a very runny consistency. It says this breakthrough primer hydrates for 24 hours. It also locks on makeup. Moisturizes with hy hyaluronic acid. Lightweight texture absorbs in seconds. Helps makeup look good and last all day long. Now Smashbox is definitely known for their different primers. All of their like photo finish primers. Their primer water is amazing. And this is the newest product from them. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's very runny liquidy. I love the Smashbox primer water. There's not a whole lot of products I enjoy from Smashbox. But that primer water is bomb. And then this one on sale for $25 on Alta.com one fine day in the beginning of the year. So I was like, shit, let me try it. Maybe I'll really like it. So far, it's definitely not hydrating enough for me to be a moisturizer, but I use this after I use my Juno oil just to give my skin extra, extra hydration. Plus, I'm not a big believer of primers, so since it's two in one, I figured I'll take all the hydration I can get, and if it primes my face, then more power to me. 
Okay, so here is another product I decided to try and pan. I don't know if it's going to happen like this year, but it is in my project pan because it's got a sticker on it. This is the Ambient Lighting Edit Palette by Hourglass, and this is actually the first one they ever came out with. Uh, most of my pans are actually pretty flat. I do think this is not really the most suitable one for my skin tone. It is pretty light. Like the bronzer I can maybe wear in the winter time, which is like now when I'm really pale. Uh, but I use these powders to set my face currently. And the two blushes are really pretty. I do think the one from 2017 is more suitable for my skin. I did end up buying that because I had used this palette on one of my friends with lighter skin. And I just realized how beautiful the Hourglass powders are. So if you've been meaning to try Hourglass, I would highly recommend trying some of their products. It is a little bit hard if you are of darker skin tone. I don't know why there's like a hair. If you are of a darker skin tone, some of it might not show up on your face. So be cautioned, but it they do make really good products. It really makes me sad that they don't cater for different skin tones. So hopefully that's something that they will change in 2018. Okay guys, let's talk about a brush I've been using. So this is the Real Techniques powder brush and I bought this for powdering and I was like, gosh, I really don't like how big this is. So it just kind of ended up not getting used. I prefer a more, um, what is this called? A, a dome shape kind of brush for my powder. So this is what I use to set my face. This is from Morphe, this is a G5. This was from their Morphe Me like brush club that I subscribe to so I get brushes every month and I like it because it really has helped me build my brush collection. Now you guys know I'm not a fan of Morphe so I don't like promote Morphe but I do have some of their brushes from that subscription. So this is the kind of brush I like to use for powder. A more tapered brush. It really helps me get under the eyes and like I can really buff things in. But this guy is amazing for bronzer. I heard a YouTuber mention that this is her favorite bronzer brush and I was like, let me try that. Let me try that and see what happens. And it actually works amazingly as a bronzer brush. Today I'm wearing this bronzer. This is again in my project pan. This is MAC Give Me Sun. It is a perfect bronzer for me in the winter time. It's orangey but I think it works with my skin tone. A lot of people are not able to use this bronzer because it's very orange based. But if you are tan, I don't think you'll have a problem with it. And I'm getting so excited because I can see I'm making like serious progress with this bronzer. So my plan is to kind of keep using this as my wintry bronzer. And it is so good with this brush. So something for you guys to check out if you are looking for an affordable bronzer brush. And also if you're looking for a tan girl friendly bronzer for the winter time, definitely check out the MAC Gimme Sun. This is what I used as my setting spray today. This is the Sephora Rose Hydrating Mist. Now I haven't had this for too long, but it is a really tiny bottle. So I'm going through it quite quickly. Now it says on here that it should be like quenching my face and it's an antioxidant and Rose is just known for its like moisturizing properties. I don't feel like this does anything extra special for me. It is only like $7 on Sephora.com, so I really wasn't expecting anything crazy. It doesn't give me like a luminous glow or anything like that, but it does say that it's supposed to be brightening. So I don't know if this is more so like a skincare benefit than a like setting powder or like setting your face type benefit, but I like it. I don't love it. I wouldn't run out and buy it. So I just wanted to mention all of these products to you guys just so you knew like what I use to get this makeup look. I just thought it would be an interesting video for you guys. So my go-to lash curler is the Sephora Lash Curler. I also have the one from Tweezerman, but that doesn't work with my eye shape. So I actually really prefer the Sephora one and these are very affordable. So if you're trying to get into curling your lashes, definitely check that out. Now this is a Sonia Kashuk brush from a set of brushes I picked up from them a while ago. But this is the one I use for highlighters. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't think you're able to get this anymore, but they're nice. I like Sonia Kashuk brushes and now Target owns the brand, which I didn't know. I thought Sonia Kashuk still owned the brand, uh, but Target owns the brand and they have strictly gone from selling makeup to just brushes and like makeup accessories which is really interesting. So if you guys see it at Target, 
check it out. This is another Sonia Kashuk brush. This is so old. I bet if Sonia Kashuk was watching this video, she'd be like, oh my god, that's like archives. Uh, but this brush, this brush set was like really scratchy. And then I just discovered that this was my perfect blush brush. I love applying blush with this guy. It does a perfect job. It's also really good at the ColourPop Super Shock Cheek products. The blushes it picks up really really well so I will never part with this brush oh my god I love it so much I use it constantly on my face now you guys are gonna be so shocked when I talk about a Natasha Denona product I love because I literally saw a comment today where somebody was like Karen you need to stop buying Natasha Denona because all you do is bitch about them but I did take a gamble when I was in Vegas I got to actually touch and swatch her products so I am really 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 into highlighty glowy blushes right now and when I saw this I was like oh my gosh this looks gorgeous so I bought this this is a Natasha Denona duo glow in Alba and she has another color which is like a pink color and I was like mm. so I wish she'd come out with more of these this is actually why I bought you guys I have both of these Natasha Denona face palettes the diamond and blush palettes and again I was bitching about these because not only are they expensive which is fine because I buy a lot of expensive makeup but I literally bought this whole palette for this pinky blush because it looks so so beautiful in her promo pictures unfortunately this color is just too light on my face so it just looks like a pinky highlighter which I don't need to keep this whole palette for and then in this one I basically bought this whole thing for this yellow highlighter but now I'm like that's ridiculous I don't need to keep this whole palette for that I'm gonna do a swatch party video on these I'm so long overdue and I'm gonna kind of give you guys a small review on them I don't plan on keeping them so I'm kind of ruining that video for you guys right now but this is amazing so I did manage to find one Natasha Denona product I liked so you guys should give this video a thumbs up because um, you're proud of me that I'm finally stopped complaining about her brand <laughs> Okay, this guy is the Anastasia Beverly Hills. This is her clear brow gel. Now, mine is no longer clear because I've been using it so much. This thing, like, never runs out. I keep thinking, like, one day there's going to be nothing that comes out of this. But there's still stuff in here, so I'm just going to keep using it. I use this to tame my brows. I also use it because I have a shit ton of baby hairs. So when I wear my hair up, I usually will run this through my hair. Just a little life hack for you guys. Clear brow gel is just as good as hair gel, so... Little fun fact, here is another thing I'm trying to use up. This is the ever famous Tarte Shape Tape and I like to use the shade Tan Sand. This does work well on me. I have started applying it with my fingertips, which does help me blend it better. I honestly am probably one of the few people on the internet that don't think this concealer is worth the hype. I'm kind of on a concealer journey right now because I feel like I haven't found like my holy grail. I felt like the Naked Skin was my holy grail for a long time. I went through quite a few tubes of those, but I don't know. I don't have a concealer that I really, really love. I guess I do like the ColourPop ones. I should mention that. But this is the one I'm currently like using every single day because I do want to use it up. And I think I only have a little bit left. I think I'm up to about here as far as the product goes. So I'm very excited to use it up and declutter it from my collection. Now here is a little sample size I'm trying to use up. This is the Biosans Squalene Peptide Eye Gel. So basically this is a newish brand to Sephora and uh, I got the sample because I love trying out eye creams and I'm excited. I like this product. I think it does a good job of hydrating under my eyes. And I do like using an eye cream, guys. Whatever age you are, if you are watching this video and you take one thing away, invest in an eye cream, hydrate that area. It can be so dry and, you know, you form so many wrinkles underneath your eyes and, like, your dark circles and things like that. So invest in an eye cream. This one says it reduces puffiness and dark circles. I don't feel like it's done any kind of magic on my face, but... I do like it. I'm glad I got a sample of it. Okay, guys, the next product I've been using is the Beauty Blender. This is actually the Red Beauty Blender. And I haven't bought... That's not true because I did buy some Beauty Blenders on sale the other day. But I do usually use more affordable makeup sponges. I do have a few Beauty Blenders beauty blenders in my collection that are probably due to be thrown out but they're so expensive I can't bring myself to toss them but this is one that's still good it's just dirty because obviously I used it on my face today 
And uh, if you guys learn one thing again from this video, do not buy the red beauty blenders. There is a lot of dye in them. And when I first washed this one, oh my gosh, like red coloring just kept coming out and coming out and coming out. And I'm like, are you serious right now? Like this is disgusting. So I managed to pretty much wash all the red coloring out of it. I mean, if I clean it right now, it's still going to look red, but it is unbelievable how much coloring is in one of these freaking sponges. So I think that's why a lot of people recommend the tan, the nude one or the black one. I believe I have, I don't think I have a black one. Um, the colors I have are like the reds, the pinks, uh, the nude one. Uh, but yeah, I just, such a turn off with this sponge, but I've had this forever now, so it's fine. But I was shocked when I first washed that freaking beauty blender. Now, I did have some severe eyeliner looks this week, and I did get some requests to do like a liquid liner or like a wing liner tutorial. I'll probably try and do that on Instagram. It's just hard when you have one hand to film. And, oh gosh, I really don't think I'm a master of liquid liner. But over the course of the years of being on YouTube, I have tried so many different liquid liners. And so far, the one I've repurchased has been this one. This is the Makeup Forever Professional whatever ink liner. And this is just the shade... Does it say on here if it has a color? It's just the black one. I don't even know if they make different colors of this. This is a matte liquid eyeliner. I love this stuff. I thought I was never going to learn how to use it, but honestly, I have, for the most part, mastered it. Sometimes my eyeliner looks can get pretty wild. I also really like the Lottie London liquid liner, the felt pen, but that's also really hard to find. I'm not a gel eyeliner girl. I can never control how big my wing gets then, and it's just... A freaking nightmare situation so this is just like quick and easy and it lasts a long time so this is makeup forever's ink liner next let's talk about my favorite waterline liner I will never buy anything else guys unless something really amazing comes along this is the Pat McGrath labs permagel ultra guide eye pencil in extreme black it is a bit spendy it's about 25 bucks but if you get it during the VIB sale or you just invest and this is the only black liner you have, well, then you're going to be just fine. So I love this and I think I'm going to pick up some more colors when the VIB sale comes along in April. This is my go-to brow powder, you guys know, Anastasia Chocolate. And yeah, I don't think I'm going to hit pan on this anytime soon. I feel like eyebrow powder is just one of those things you can constantly use. I do have her brow definer. I was not a fan of it. I got it for free in my Makeup for makeup by Mario Masterclass goodie bag. I couldn't even tell you where that pencil is because I just prefer powder. It's just easy for me to handle. So yeah, I really like that stuff. Next is the Clinique Bottom Lash Mascara. This is like 10 bucks from Clinique. And a lot of YouTubers mentioned this, so I bought it. And it's okay. I don't think you need a specific, like, mascara for your bottom lashes. But sometimes the regular eyelash brushes can be really, really too big. So it is nice to have something a little bit smaller so you can, like, get in there. This is the mascara I used today for my top lashes. This is the Kevin Aquan, the Expert Mascara. And I believe I got this in like one of those Sephora favorite sets. This is good, but the formula is pretty dry. So I had to put some contact solution in here and then it made it a little bit wetter. So that's nice. I really like the shape of this brush. It really helps you get in to the root or the base of your lashes. So really, really like this for that, but I wouldn't go out and buy it myself. It was in the set, so I have it, but I wouldn't rebuy it. Now, some brushes I use. This is the Anastasia, what is this number? 12, I think? I don't know. I've used this so much that I've wiped off the numbering on this, but this is what I use for my brows with the brow powder. So if you guys are looking for a good eyebrow brush, I would honestly recommend just investing in one of Anastasia's because it's really, really good. This is the brush I use for my eyebrow highlight or not eyebrow but like my brow bone highlight this is from wet n wild super inexpensive brush i don't know what it's called but i think it's their big um it's their big eyeshadow brush and i think you can find this at like the dollar tree or walmart or wherever today i only used one shadow in my lid i was like i said i'm so tired right now 
Uh, this is the Morphe M576 brush, and I love a nice fluffy crease brush, you guys. I can just sit there and blend into my crease all day long. And then to smoke out my lower lash line, I use the Morphe E18 brush, which is a nice little brush to get under your waterline. So those are the two eyeshadow brushes I use today. And then for my foundation, this is a foundation I love. I am trying to use this up. I, I think I could repurchase this again, but I have so many foundations. I don't think I will buy this, but if I ever like really, really, really want to buy a extremely full coverage foundation, I'll probably purchase this one. This is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Maximum Cover Camouflage Makeup for face and body, and I have wear the shade 4N2. Uh, which is Spice Sand. This is the color I wear with Estee Lauder, like all of the double wear foundations, and this is the double wear maximum cover. So I was super curious because I love the double wear foundation. So I decided to try this because I'm like, more coverage than double wear? That's insane. Um, and you do not need a lot of this foundation. You need like a drop. It is so emollient and it blends so well. I feel like my face looks so flawless when I have this on and it's really good for the winter time because it's a little bit more sticky so it doesn't like dry your face out. So love this stuff if you're looking for a extremely, extremely full coverage foundation. I would 100% recommend this guy and I really don't think I talk about this enough and I really don't see anyone else on YouTube talking about this either so I think it's one of those hidden gems that you guys should definitely check out. So this is another item that is in my project pan. This is MAC Soft Ochre. I have been using this every day purely because I do want to finish this up. And this is a really good eyeshadow base. I think it does the job. I have been trying the Milani one and I like that one and it's like six bucks. So I don't think I would repurchase Soft Ochre for the foreseeable future, but it is currently in my collection. So of course I wanted to show it to you guys. Okay guys, and then if you are curious what is on my lips, I'm wearing this guy. I don't wear this enough, but it is a absolutely beautiful color. This is from the John Basquiat collection by Urban Decay, and this is the shade Epigram. It's a beautiful nude for my skin tone, and I don't think you can purchase this anymore. But uh, yeah, I'm sure Urban Decay has something like this in their permanent line if you guys are interested in buying this, and I love the packaging as well. And then finally, the eyeshadow palette I used on my face or my eyeballs today is the Viseart Warm Matte Palette. Now, I have been meaning to do a Viseart like review. I have three of their matte, all matte palettes, and I actually just recently got the neon one. So thanks a lot, Angelica. I'm going to blame that one on you as well since you've got me all hyped up about color. I've been freakishly buying every like color palette colorful palette I could get my hands on, but this is just such a gorgeous palette. Honestly, I just knew I needed this the second that Viseart came out with this, and I love it. I don't use it enough, but if you are like a professional makeup artist, you honestly should look at these palettes because I think you can definitely use this as a like under eye brightener powder. You want to set your makeup with this. You can use some of these shades on your brows. You can use this shade as a blush on a really dark skin tone. Their neutral matte palette is like a must for every single person. You don't think you're going to use it, but oh god, I love that palette and this one. So I was really excited about using it. I did a very simple eye look today. So yeah. Just wanted to show you guys this guy, and I would 100% recommend picking up any of the Viseart All Matte palettes. Okay guys, that is everything for this video. I hope you enjoyed me talking about what is on my face today. I just thought it would be kind of fun because I feel like I gave you little mini reviews on all the products I'm wearing today, and uh, yeah, just some things I use all the time but I never remember to make a video about. So if you like this concept, definitely let me know and I will make more of them for you. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, if you guys are new to my channel, I'm sure quite a few of you are. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you will consider subscribing or you know letting your friends know to check out my channel. And yeah, I hope you guys have a great rest of your Sunday and uh, have a good week, guys. Bye.